for doing this for us. We do have an audience out there, I guess, of about 100 people. We had 58 this morning. So that's we, we've been able to expand the number of people that get to uh, participate. And we welcome our, our live stream people as well. So with that, I would like to introduce Dr. Ann Berry. Dr. Berry is a past national president of Epsilon Sigma Phi, and she will introduce our Ruby Award winner. Thank you, Kathy. Um, it is with great honor and pleasure that I get to introduce to you this year's Ruby Award winner. This award, as you know, is the most prestigious award um, level of recognition that is given to recognize outstanding leadership, innovative thinking, and sustained exceptional performance across a lifetime of career, service, and extension. And I know that you will agree with me after you hear of the accomplishments of this year's recipients, Dr. Kim Cross, it, that he is highly deserving of this, this award. And of course, you have in your possession at your table all of this a condensed version of his application packet. And I'm just going to highlight some of the accomplishments that he has over the last 30 years plus of his extension career. He has served as an instructor, a professor, extension specialist, extension dean, and he is now serving as the chancellor of the Institute of Agriculture at the University of Tennessee. He earned both his MS and BS degrees in ag economics from Oklahoma State University. Anybody from Oklahoma here? Yay, okay. And he earned his doctorate in ag economics from where the Oregon State University people. Yay. So, um, but he is now in Tennessee and we claim him as one of our own. He has many contributions to extension and just some of the national ones that I wanna highlight include serving on the National Impact Database Committee, the Joint Committee of ECOP and ESCOP, the National Extension Committee on Policy, and the APLU Board on Ag Assembly. But contributions to Extension also include contribution to our own ESP Association. He has been a member um, since 1996, serving as the Tennessee Omega Chapter Vice President from 1998 to 2000. He has also financially supported our association with scholarship efforts at the state level and has presented at national ESP conferences, serving as part of the administrator's panel. And I want to personally, publicly thank him for significantly supporting um, the 2015 ESP National President's Key uh, Campaign because he did contribute um, to that significantly, and I'm personally thankful for that, very grateful. But across the country, his colleagues have described him as committed, engaging, reliable, kind, supportive, humorous, knowledgeable, and a fantastic communicator. And it's with great honor to introduce to you Dr. Kim Cross, Chancellor, University of Tennessee Institute of Agriculture, our 2018 Epsilon Sigma Phi Distinguished Service Ruby Award recipient, Dr. Cross. Well, this is indeed an honor and uh, one that frankly I'm not terribly comfortable with. I'm not accustomed to the spotlight on me. I like to put the spotlight on others and it'll take me just a few minutes to get comfortable behind this podium and behind this uh, online viewing audience uh, to really uh, let this award sink in. So bear with me just a little bit. Uh, I do wanna uh, mention just a couple of things to establish 
credibility with the purple uh, garments in the room. Uh, my very first position uh, after I finished a master's degree at Oklahoma State University was in Kansas, and it was out at Fort Hayes State University, uh, a few hours west of here. It was a great experience uh, because I, when I got out there, I realized that the students uh, who were studying ag business, which is what I was responsible for, uh, what they were there at the school for largely was to get information and take back home and use it on their farms. And that really actually pointed me in the direction of an extension career. I didn't realize it exactly at that time, but that's what it wound up doing. And I found it very fulfilling uh, to serve a role where, where we could, uh, as Greg mentioned earlier today, make a difference in the lives of individuals. And so that was uh, a great experience. I, I really enjoyed the time in western Kansas. I tell everyone uh, Hayes, Kansas is a wonderful place. Uh, and in fact, it's the only place between Kansas City and Denver. So uh, uh, I, I had a great year there and uh, hope you get a chance to see Hayes, Kansas yourself one day. All right, enough of, of history. I'm feeling better up here. So uh, this, this afternoon, uh, I am going to stick fairly closely to my script out of respect actually to our online audience and try to keep the words that I had in mind uh, over the last several weeks to share. Uh, but I look forward to opportunities to dialogue with, with everyone uh, throughout the course of the day uh, following this address. And I, I'd have to say having so many uh, officers, uh, accomplished extension professionals, and former Ruby Award winners in the audience makes this e uh, even more intimidating uh, to come before you and attempt to share anything that, uh, that you might not have heard before. Uh, I ultimately gave up on that and figured I'll just repeat some things that I think were good and we'll go from there. So uh, bear with me. Well, first, uh, as I've already mentioned, I, I believe uh, and I feel that this is really an unexpected honor, and I'm truly humbled to receive this award. I consider it, uh, obviously, to be a team award, and it really should be shared with all those I've had the pleasure to work with uh, throughout my career, including my extension coworkers, uh, the farmers, families, and youth that I've had the privilege to serve, and the many agencies, industry partners, and donors who make so much of our work possible. I should probably also add, as most of you would add, that it would not be possible without my own personal family's support, my spouse, my children, because as you well know, if you're in extension, you're gone at many nights, many weekends, uh, certainly uh, throughout the day, and, and if it weren't for family support, it wouldn't be possible uh, for recognition like this. Of course, I really need to also personally recognize uh, those who nominated me for this outstanding recognition. I'm not going to say they embellished my materials in any way, but they certainly presented them in the best possible light, so uh, <laughs> we'll just stick with that. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Ann Berry, uh, Shelley J Barnes, and Johnny Barnes, members of ESP back in Tennessee, who were all part of the nominating process. I appreciate the time uh, that they devoted to developing the nomination materials uh, and submitting that nomination. And more importantly, I want to thank all of them as well as all my uh, Tennessee uh, supporters uh, here at the front uh, for all that they do and all that each of you do uh, for Epsilon Sigma Phi, UT Extension, and obviously in Tennessee our many stakeholders uh, throughout the state. So thinking about this address and what I could possibly share that would be meaningful uh, as the exceptional, uh, as meaningful as the exceptional Ruby Award winners uh, who came before me, I've reflected on my career and my experiences thinking back over what I did at various times throughout the last 35 years. And as I was reviewing a lot of those extension programs that I was a part of, uh, it really brought to mind, to me, the song, Turn, 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 to Everything There Is a Season. And that was written, uh, as you'll recall, by Peter Seeger in the 1950s and made famous in the birds, uh, uh, by the birds in 1965 is when they uh, produced that song. The lyrics for that song are taken almost verbatim from the book of Ecclesiastes, and the focus of the message in the song is that there is a time and a place for all things. Now, let me reassure you, for those that know me, I am not going to sing that song, so <laughs> you, you can rest easy. But what I am going to do is reflect just a little bit on that song as, as I reflected on my own career and as I think you might reflect on your career 
and think about where we've been because I think it's always helpful to, to be reminded of our roots and where we came from as we then think about where we're headed and where we need to be, where we ought to go. So while my entire career only spans the past 35 years, Extension's history, as you well know, is more than 100 years old uh, and 100 years strong. We've seen many seasons come and go throughout that time, and I think it's worth pausing for a few minutes to consider how Extension has adapted and responded as the seasons have changed. So let's start with one of the first lyrics uh, that I chose to focus on, and that was a lyric that says, a time to plant and a time to reap. When Extension was created through the passage of the Smith-Lever Act in 1914, our country was really undergoing significant change. The Industrial Revolution was underway, and the challenge was to feed and clothe our population. Educational programs and demonstrations were conducted at that time to increase crop yields and as also livestock production, as well as improve food preservation as well as food safety. Youth were identified as a key target audience, and 4-H was established to expand our reach to more farms and families across the nation. Extension programs were at the right place at the right time to meet the needs of the season for planting and reaping. Following that season, we entered a time that I think can be captured by the lyric, a time of war, a time of peace. So if you recall back uh, following the, the early 1910s, 1920s, we entered into World War I. And that was really our first opportunity to respond to national crises uh, accompanied by both World War I and World War II. Extension agents supported the need for more food. They helped to respond to the Spanish flu epidemic. Agents promoted victory gardens, and we taught youth how to raise chicken and eggs. Following the wars, Extension assisted citizens through community leadership and community improvement projects. Education and hands-on demonstrations during these seasons of war and seasons of peace revealed the ability of Extension to respond to unexpected needs in a timely and relevant manner. After which, we experienced a season of a time to build up and a time to break down. The Great Depression in the 1930s brought a season of building up and breaking down for Extension staff. Our agents faced challenges in building up the financial capacity during a period of historically low commodity prices and rapidly diminishing family income. We were also charged with building up our soils by planting soil conserving crops, which was dreadfully needed due to the dust bowl that plagued much of our country during this time, and which we saw photos of uh, earlier from Mr. Uh, Richardson's presentation. Our nation's capacity to produce food crops and livestock was broken down along with the economy. Families were taught by extension how to better manage their money, deal with bankruptcy and foreclosure, and supplement their farm income, and thereby we helped to build them up. And that brought us to a season for a time to gain and a time to lose. The post-war era led to significant growth in 4-H youth development programs in particular. New events, activities, and projects were offered, focusing on citizenship, leadership, and service. Competitive events such as livestock shows grew in popularity and importance. Across the country, it was a season of gaining 4-H members and volunteers. It was also a time to help youth learn how to lose and how to gain benefits from the act of losing. That is something that our agents know all too well is not an easy lesson to teach, nor is it an easy lesson for parents to understand, uh, but uh, an important role for Extension to play. We've helped them to benefit from these experiences as they went on to assume leadership roles in their communities. Next, a time you may embrace, a time to re refrain from embracing. And no, I'm not talking about sexual assault. After years of programming focused on increasing the food security of the nation, new challenges really emerged. Extension responded to the call to improve diets and reduce obesity through increased nutrition education and food safety programs. After years of struggling to meet our food needs, we found ourselves facing health challenges related to heart disease, diabetes, and other chronic diseases that were often linked to poor eating habits. 
Families were and continue to be taught how to make better food choices, prepare healthier meals, and manage limited financial resources. We help consumers to embrace better health while refraining from overeating foods that were shown through, reduce, through research to lead to poor health outcomes. And now today, I feel, we're in a position of a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. Today, Extension is casting away inefficient and outdated production practices and gathering site-specific data to utilize technology to improve profitability, protect natural resources, and enhance health. We're also investing in new educational delivery methods and utilizing technology to teach new and diverse audiences, gathering our learning communities together for better results. One need only review the titles of the September 2018 issue of the Journal of Extension to see that a new season is upon us, a season which includes new funding models, adoption of mobile learning platforms, and social media as delivery systems, along with better integration of volunteers in engaging both youth and adults in learning new knowledge. So that little stroll through our history obviously brings us to where we are today and presents us then with the challenge of what season is next. How will Extension be expected to or be offered an opportunity to respond to our next season? Well, this brief recap of the many seasons Extension has experienced really demonstrates that major changes have occurred in response to pressing social issues faced by our country. Now we need to consider the questions, what will we face in the future, and will Extension be willing and able to adapt and respond as we have in the past? I thought about another um, sort of common and popular saying that we hear quite frequently these days, and it's from the popular home box office series, Game of Thrones, which, many, which includes many references to the quote, winter is coming. So I think to myself, all right, is Extension facing a season of winter? Is winter coming for Extension? This statement really uh, represents, I think, a perspective of constant watchfulness. What they're saying in, in that show is winter's coming. Be prepared. Be watching. Be looking ahead. Be thinking about how we respond. And I think that's exactly uh, what Extension has done over the past hundred years and what we need to continue to do for the future. In the series, the House Stark and the Lord of the North repeatedly warn that winter is coming in order to build support to deal with all that winter brings. In recent years, many have raised alarms and signaled that winter is coming for our extension programs. These alarms generally seem based on observations or forecasts of decreased budgets, perceived lack of relevance in programming, a lack of visibility or recognition, especially among our urban audiences and our urban stakeholders. Winter for extension may uh, signal things like slashed funding, drastically reduced contacts and impacts, and loss of support across all program areas. In order to prepare for this winter, we have developed new staffing models, created new curriculum and programs, and turn to information technology as a way to engage with more people uh, in more timely and more efficient manners. These actions have helped us as we defend ourselves against the onslaught of a winter season that might reduce Extension's role and its value. But I think there's also an alternative view of the winter that we face, and that may be seen from a broader global or national perspective. This view might acknowledge that winter is taking the shape of a growing world population that will require a dramatic increase in food production over the next three decades. Or maybe the winter we're facing is the growing rural divide uh, in per capita income, I'm sorry, the growing rural urban divide in per capita income, health status, information access, and population growth. Or perhaps the winter we face is characterized by increased civil discord that leads to greater global conflict. I suspect each of us in this room has a different expectation of what the next season is that Extension will be called upon to address. It may be characterized by both the alarmist uh, budget decline, uh, lack of support views that we discussed moments ago, or it may be described as the, the grand challenges and global issues that we're facing, uh, which were also mentioned. 
We must defend ourselves while simultaneously mounting offensives to defeat winter if we're going to remain successful and remain effective. To be vibrant and dynamic, Extension, like any other organization, must continue to grow and evolve. Embracing past effective practices, like relying on local needs assessments and emphasizing personal contacts and customer service, will help to maintain the status quo. Addressing, though, new grand challenges will likely in require new investments in new programs and new delivery methods. For years, Extension, and, and really our land-grant universities, as well as our private sector partners, have focused on becoming more efficient by doing more with less. Anybody relate to that? Uh, we've been challenged to do more with less for years. More recently, in my view, we've leaned upon information technology to at least try to do more with the same, to do more, to reach more with what we already have. Well, I think uh, as we consider going forward, what we really need to do is thinking about reaching uh, and meeting the challenges of the next season by doing more with more. So let that sink in just a little bit. We've been doing more with less. We've tried to do the same with more. But if we want to feed the world in 2050, if we want to reduce the incidence of chronic diseases, if we want to reduce uh, civil discord acro across this globe, we need to challenge ourselves to do more with more. More agents and volunteers are needed to reach more youth who become good citizens and stewards of our world. And more demonstrations, experiential learning opportunities, and applied studies are going to be required to feed and clothe a growing world population. Of course, all this requires more funding, which come, must come from either public or private sources. So how do we prepare for the next extension season? I know there's many in the audience who will say to themselves, well, growing extension through additional resources is foolhardy. Tight state and federal budgets, increasingly competitive grant awards, resistance to increased user fees, and ethical questions about gift funding uh, used to carry out new programs all su suggest that extension budgets will be extremely challenging and fraught with pitfalls. And I would have to say I would not argue against any of those views independently. However, I would say if we're to grow and do more in the seasons before us, we can build on our strengths, demonstrate that we're indispensable to those that we serve. And I think we've been doing that for 100 years. Uh, I just think we need to do more of it. In my view, our greatest strength is our people and their passion, commitment, and dedication to help others. Equipping our people to engage effectively with a wide range of community members is essential. That includes personal contacts in the field, as well as effective distance-based engagement through technology. It's not either or, it's both. We need to know and have positive professional relationships with elected officials, partners, and agencies, and our extension leaders really need to facilitate and support these relationships at the local, regional, state, and national levels. And more importantly, we must be sure that we can continue to contribute to addressing social, critical social issues with the strength of the land-grant university system and the research-based knowledge that it produces. Now, these are not terribly new or revolutionary ideas, and many of our extension staff are going to say, as you will probably say, that we're already doing as much as we can as fast as we can. I don't think we can ask everyone to work longer days or to work more nights or to work more weekends. I know many are already facing significant challenges with regard to work and family responsibility. My experience, though, suggests that maintaining personal contacts while leveraging new and innovative ways of reaching an increasingly diverse group of stakeholders will lead to more recognition, more visibility, more support, and eventually more funding. I think about the quote, the best way to, create, uh, to predict the future is to create it. I think we need to be engaged in creating that future uh, by continuing to serve those in our local communities, anticipating the needs that we see uh, at a broader state, national, and global level, and really uh, emphasizing uh, the heritage that we've started from, and that is being access to the university for the people. 
I'm of the strong belief that we have the ability to take on the challenges of the next season, just as we have since we were established in 1914. The last line of the song, turn, 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 includes words of hope and optimism, and that line reads as follows. A time for peace, I swear it's not too late. Like the songwriter, I also have great confidence that the future is bright for our world and for extension. Now is the time for us to turn our attention to the seasons ahead and continue the legacy of those outstanding extension leaders who came before us. Winter is coming, but I don't think it's too late. Let's continue to devote our efforts to feeding the world, improving our health and well-being, developing our youth, and growing our communities. I'm really proud of the work being done each and every day by thousands of Extension staff across the country, as well as the volunteers that work with them. Extension continues to be relevant and impactful today, and I believe it will be tomorrow. I'm fortunate to have been a part of those efforts for the past 35 years. Thank you for all you do through Epsilon Sigma Phi for the Extension profession, and thanks for allowing me to share these remarks today. Thank you. And I had just gotten comfortable up here now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Cross. I have a few other comments, but first we'd like to, um, I don't know how else to say this, but pin you. Um, and to give him a, a plaque on behalf of Epsilon Sigma Phi in the state of Tennessee extension. So um, some of you, especially those who are your first time attending, you may not understand the significance of the ruby pin. There is a ruby stone, that's the ruby lecture, ruby recipient, but there are also diamonds in the pin, and they are significant. Um, each um, diamond represents 10 years, so he's got 35 years of experience, so He's got three diamonds, okay? We don't have a half diamond for three, for the five years. Okay, so the um, chapter gives, the, our Tennessee chapter supplies the diamond. So anyway, we've got um, one ruby and three diamonds. So congratulations, Dr. Cross. We are so proud, very proud of you. We also have a plaque for Dr. Cross, and it reads, 2018 Distinguished Service Ruby Recognition to Dr. Tim Cross in recognition of his career as an instructor, professor, extension specialist, dean, and chancellor. You have been busy. Um, which spans over 30 years in three states. Dr. Cross continues to be recognized nationally as an outstanding administrator and dedicated leader. He is supportive and encouraging leader leaders who have allowed Tennessee Extension to continue to meet the ever-changing needs of its clientele. We appreciate all you've done for Extension in your 30 years. Thank you, Dr. Cross. I want you to think about what Dr. Cross said. He gave us some challenges, but he also gave us a lot of hope. He also gave us a lot of answers. But, he's, but one thing I need to really thank you for, Dr. Cross, I didn't know Extension had a theme song. <laughs> I think it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. He said, is winter coming? Are you watching? Are you preparing for the future? 
Is extension nimble, nimble enough to meet the grand challenges that he talked about? Are you ready for the changing season? Are you ready to do more with more by creating your own future? Thank you so very much. We have a couple of other items on our agenda. I would like to introduce to you.